and welcome again to another episode of Nerf News, your number one source for Nerf News on the net, and this one's going to be really late, so I owe you guys a little bit of an explanation. Normally I upload like every single day, and at worst, every other day. I took a solid week off, and man did it feel great actually. So, I took a week off for a couple of different reasons, I uh, was in Texas, was doing a bunch of epic nerf battle stuff, this year the epic nerf battle had way more moving pieces than it normally does, so I will get some cool footage out to you, but like, wow, uh, biggest year yet, 4,000 people on the field, just absolutely turbo level crazy insane, so uh, that took a lot out of me, that was a lot of travel days, I got back, and when I get back, bam, no sooner do I get back than I have to do a bunch of stuff for a company about a 3D printer, 3D printing and I have not mixed well in the past, so I'm working on that video and that content, and I've been doing just a bunch of crazy stuff. So I did like a cute little test print, and then I made this fun little guy, and then I started printing upgrades for my upgrades because I'm tired of yanking out SD cards, taking them down to the workshop, then coming back up, programming the SD card. You, you get it, it was just a huge pain. So I uh, made a tiny computer, and then I made a case for the tiny computer, and this is like two steps from being plugged in and ready to go. So that's like a quick update on what's going on and why it's been a week since the last video, but I do have some really cool stuff to talk to you about. So uh, this is the Instagram account YC4, or YC627. I don't know anything about this guy other than he's an industrial designer. Uh, I found him through my friend Ben, uh, who goes by Foam Shepherd online, and we're gonna talk about this. He calls this the Hyperion. Now obviously he is not a Nerf designer, and this is not a blaster that's actually being brought to market. This is just a prototype. I'm sure he catted this up for like a design project, but a few people thought that it was real. Now, it isn't real, but how cool would it be? So what it essentially is, if we take a look at it here, is it's a chaos and a, yeah, chaos is the one with the 40 round magazine or the 44 round magazine. So it's a chaos and a, Apollo style blaster, I guess in this case it would be a Helios uh, style blaster since it's bolt action up at the top and it's a wild integration super rifle style thing. So blowing them up here doesn't actually work really well so I did snip them and I blew them up over here so that we can look at them this way. Now I think that this is a really really cool kind of concept and mock up so you can see he's clearly gone Phantom Core, you got the Phantom Core logo. I have to move myself to show you guys the Phantom Core logo. So you get the Phantom Core logo, uh, cheek rest, not a lot of black on the blaster other than handle, full guard here for both handles, both triggers. Comes with a scope, which is interesting. Uh, optics don't normally come on rival blasters, so that's neat, rival rail. Then it's got these super funky iron sights built into it in case you don't wanna do this. And then the bolt to prime on the side. Now, the only thing from a design perspective that I think would be weird about this blaster is that it appears as though this is the the top magazine for your uh, your spring powered blaster, and then down here, like just what a wild way to load it. So I think if we come in here, and we have to like shrink it back down to size so that we can jump through. There we go. You can see that it's got like some sort of loading flap in the front to load this. Then this charging would load this, and then that would fire out the top. So it's got a Springer component, this being the spring back here. And then luckily, since you can just move the electronic components for switches basically anywhere in a blaster like this, this is really novel that he's got rev switch and firing switch here on a secondary handle. So you'd be holding it constantly, operating it that way. That means that like at any given point, you'd have to choose which hand to reload or open doors with. But uh, this would be just like a hyper, hyper functional integration. I would love to see Hasbro actually make something like this, but if they do, I hope they give this guy credit. Uh, Hasbro has a naughty habit of bo uh, borrowing ideas from the modification community and then just being like, oh, we did it. Um, but uh, this is really, really cool. Uh, it's like a Chaos Magazine, but again, it's not a Chaos Magazine. It looks like what the Chaos Magazine should have always been, which is four 12-round magazines all separately installed. These all seem to be kind of separate and they would load through this panel down here up into the blaster. Now that is kind of weird because do you really want four different magazine releases? It could also be neat to have them integrated in some sort of way where there was like a slide on the side, you pull it down, you load them all uh, 
pseudo Artemis style and keep going from there. So I have one more perspective on this, but man, the front end is mean. This is just a really cool concept. The stock is kind of small, but cool concept. And then here you just kind of see how the charging handle works. So it would be very ch -ch, and then you'd have your main shot. And then at any point that you're not priming your Springer style blaster, you would be ready to go with your rev and fire switch for what could only be presumably a full auto conveyor belt fed style chaos down there. Now he's got the nomenclature right. This would be the 5200 which I guess means that he planned on putting 40 down here chaos style and then 12 up here, but this is way more than 12 rival rounds in his integrated top magazine. Either way, just a really, really cool concept. I wanted to share it with you guys because not a lot of people do design work for blasters like this outside of the companies that do the blasters like this. So I thought it would be a very interesting sort of look at what goes on in, in that process. Now, he also did a foam mock-up. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see that in his uh, CAD here. Nope. Wild. Uh, if we do go to Ben's thing, Ben has an example of like this very ghetto uh, setup that would kind of be the Hyperion here. And uh, this is rough. It's, it's a lot like modding, but it's completely not functional. And I'm sure you guys can tell that just looking at it. But a very interesting blaster. I would love to see somebody actually do an integration like this. I might even try my hand at it myself. But right now I'm working on a series of special projects. And that's really all that I'm modding right now other than a couple of strifes. But uh, if you want to see what's going on with the 3D printer as I struggle through that, uh, that's pretty much what my Instagram's been recently. You see all of the epic nerf battle stuff. Uh, here's the printer when it wasn't together. Here's the printer together. Mini Owl, all the things that I've just shown you. Uh, the only other thing that I want to say is much love nerf on Drac out. And this guy, our blue team leader, told me that boys shouldn't have long hair. So I'm coming for you, Esser. Deal with that. Uh, 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 uh.